this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In this video, I'm covering example 1 from section 3-3 in the Savas Realize Algebra 1 textbook. In this video, I'm covering uh, vertical translations of linear functions. So let's talk about some key vocabulary here. So vertical means an up or down slide. So I'm either sliding a function up or down. A translation means a slide. So when we translate a graph, we're, we're picking up the graph, we're not turning it or stretching it at all, and we're just sliding it up. The way I, I think about that is, um, say for example, you have a $1 bill on a cabinet, and you, you slide it ahead of you. Okay, You don't twist it or fold it or anything, you just move it forward. It hasn't changed size or orientation, anything like that. So this section actually opens up with, with a video, which is an example involving two uh, baby sea turtles. And so they're moving at the same speed, but Byron is ahead of Frank, the other turtle. And so they want to know which function represents each turtle's position as they make their way to shore. So for Byron, right, if I use um, the slope-intercept form, his slope is 1, right, because I'm rising by 1 and running by 1. So where m is, I'm going to put an imaginary 1. And then his y-intercept is right here at 2. So the equation for Byron is x plus 2. Now the equation for Frank, again I'm using slope-intercept form. His slope is also 1 because it rises by 1 and runs by 1. So I put an invisible 1 where the m is. But his y-intercept is at 0, so I'm not going to put anything here where the b is because plus 0 doesn't need to be written. And so what happens is I'm given the equation y equals x, which is just a, a perfectly diagonal line, and then the equation y equals x plus 2. So the only difference between those two equations is the plus 2 on Byron's equation. And that plus 2 is the vertical slide. So notice that those two lines are parallel. They have the same slope. But Byron's is always two units higher than Frank's. All right, so they, we have these two equations and this plus two shows where it moved up by two. So if you add a constant to its output, okay, remember the output is the y value. So I'm, I'm saying, well, y equals all this stuff with x plus two. So that plus 2 is outside of any grouping symbols. That's what they mean by adding it to the output. It translates the graph. So if I add to an output, the graph translates. Now here's the thing, is when you add to it, it goes up. If you subtract from the output, the graph goes in the other direction. The graph translates down. Okay, so here's, here's another example. So this red function the red line is the graph y equals negative 4x, okay? The y-intercept, notice there's nothing being added, so the y-intercept is 0. So then, on this blue graph, the g function is taking the negative 4x and it's subtracting 3 from it. So if you notice, that anchor point at 0, 0 is now down at negative 3. 
So the answer to this, the graph of g of x is translated down by 3. All right, so then remember f of x was this red one, all right, which is negative 4x. So now for g of x, they changed it to where they're adding 1.5 at the end of it. And if you look, here's 1.5. So the graph was translated up by 1.5. So the way that I know that this is vertical, because soon we're going to have horizontal translations, the way that I know that it's vertical is the addition and subtraction is done outside of any grouping symbols around the x, okay? So anything outside of a grouping symbol will always be a vertical change because you're changing the output. But there you guys have it. That is vertical translations of linear functions. Until next time.